Hey everybody, it's Lyra from Lyra Gaming and today I'm bringing you my Starfield Outpost Guide for Dummies where I'm going to really try and keep it nice and simple for everybody. I created this video because I do find that Outposts can be kind of really overwhelming for a lot of people. There's a lot of options, a lot of things you can do, but a lot of it is unnecessary or quite overwhelming. So in this video, I'm going to do a couple things for you. The first thing I'm going to do for you is help you find the best start location in the game, a location that has four key resources right off the bat. And I'm even gonna hold your hand to help you find the exact location because it is a little bit tricky. Now, once you find your location, I'm gonna go ahead and lead you through building a basic starter outpost. It's gonna have everything to get you started so that not only can you get some key resources, but you can farm XP if you want, you can farm money very easily and kind of get started without having things be too complex. Now, I will also cover the two other types of outposts out there. Your kind of main role playing slash production outposts. I'll give you a very brief introduction to those and the concepts of how you can start building those if you are so inclined. And also I'm going to mention support outposts and again, those are things you're going to get into if you decide to that you want to go a little deeper and start building out now for this entire guide you are not going to need to invest in any skills as i mentioned we're going to keep it nice and simple now if you guys are interested in seeing a more advanced guide that will build upon these basics then please let me know in the comments below and of course drop a like to support the video and if I get enough interest, then I will go ahead and make that video for you guys. Now, let's not wait any longer. Let's jump into it. We're going to be starting with finding that perfect outpost and everything you need to get started. So let's check out my Starfield Outpost Guide for Dummies. All right, we will begin by talking about building your farm, quote unquote or your starter outpost. The whole purpose of this outpost is to get you started, make an effective way to create certain important resources that you're gonna need for crafting other components. And it will give you an opportunity, if you wish, to farm EXP and or credits, although that is optional. To get started, you're gonna need a little bit under a thousand credits and resources. You need to go to either Demis and Merchantile on New Atlantis. This is right at the beginning near the starport. You can alternatively, of course, go to uh, Aquila City and go to one of the general vendors there. But what you need to buy is 14 aluminum or aluminum if you're in the US, two beryllium, 10 cobalt, two fiber, 20 iron, 15 nickel, and 16 tungsten, as well as two zero wires. And that's everything you need to get started resource wise. And next you need to travel to the star system of Bessel, which is north northwest of Seoul. And then you need to travel to Bessel 3 B. Now I do want to give credit to YouTuber Vash Kovai uh, for identifying this specific planet. It is an improvement on the planet that I've been using in my builds. So wanted to give him credit as this is a really nice optimal planet for a starter outpost. All right guys, here we are at Bustle 3B and I'm gonna now show you the trickiest part of this guide which is finding the right place to land and make your outpost. So go ahead and scan the planet and now you wanna zoom around till you find this area I'm showing you right here. Notice this big iron central area, there's water all around and we're looking to zoom in roughly over here. The markers I meant to look for is this cobalt on the left you're going to have the, the nickel right over here and kind of what looks like almost like a pyramid, but it's like an aluminum here, right? So the spot that I'm starting to aim for is a little bit southeast of there. Now what you're going to have to do, and this is a very precision focused thing, is click on there and notice now it says Rocky Desert. At this point, you double click off and you want to move slightly over. And now notice that is mountains. That's good. Now we have two out of three biomes. We will want to land in a mountain biome, but it's important that if we look up or down, we also need it to show hills. So if we go up, we check, is there hills there? No, that's mountains again. So that could be another 
landing spot. Let's look southwest. There it is. Hills. There's the mountains. And there's the rocky desert. We're right there. So this is either the landing spot or it could be one of the pixels near there. So when once you identify having those three biomes right next to each other, go back to that mountain landing spot and go ahead and land. Now do note this is going to be much easier from a perspective if you have a ship that faces forward because when you come out you're going to see likely what I see. If you have a side exiting ship you might be a little confused. So let's land and I'll show you what you're, lo what you're looking for. Now if you've hit the jackpot you will be looking at something roughly like this. It's going to be on top of a bit of a mountain and if you run forward you may or may not have the construction on the left but notice this dark mountain this is the key this is a lot different than the kind of orange mountain we have here or the other mountains which are a little lighter so you're going to go straight and to the right and i'm actually going to do this run for you now you're going to hit f and now you're going to hit r and as you run you're going to notice you have your little beacon what you're doing here is you're looking upper left hand corner see what available resources are now there is a second location that's similar to this that will have a gray mountain like this a dark mountain and the difference is instead of the setup we're going to have here you're going to have platinum instead of aluminum but because this is a beginner setup we want the aluminum version so keep running down and to the right keep going it's going to be a bit of a run and what you're looking for are these little outcrops right there. If you hit that, that means you got that third, the magic third biome. And it means we're almost there because we need the combination of this mountain up here, these biomes, these, I don't even know what to call them. Um, and then the desert. Keep going. And notice now you're seeing nickel, iron and water, but we still haven't hit the magic spot yet. But we're almost there keep running oh there's cobalt we're four out of five we need one more we just need that magical aluminum and we're almost there that's going to be more in the desert and there we are there's your aluminum perfect spot so i want to turn around my ship is up there it's a little bit of a run here is the dark mountain nobody else shows you this on their videos so check it out find it here now a lot of the mining spots will be closer to the mountains here so make sure you kind of place it right where the aluminum starts if you go too far this way you're going to lose some of the other materials so make sure you get nickel iron aluminum cobalt and water go ahead and place it all right now that we have a confirmed correct location make sure you're in build mode go ahead and hit v to toggle your view this is the view you're going to want to be building from and we're going to have a very specific build order to effectively get everything built here assuming the materials that i mentioned earlier so go ahead and tab over using c to extractors i'm going to start with your aluminum extractor find your spot on this on your base and go ahead and place it Next, go ahead and build two wind turbines for our energy. Now, this does not need to be near the extractors. Just find a spot you like. As long as it's away from any of the ex points that you need to put the extractors, you're going to be fine. So again, we're going to start with two of these to start generating some power. And then go ahead and tap over to furniture and we're going to craft the bed. You can go ahead and put that kind of near your beacon for now. So it's right there when you fast travel in. At this point, go ahead and hit escape. And what we're going to want to do here is actually sleep. Because when you sleep, it's going to pass time and the extractors are going to do their job. Now, what's amazing about this specific planet is if you notice one local hour equals almost 58 universal time hours. And crafting etc is based off of universal hours so for every hour you're getting almost 58 times the time so 
you get crazy efficiency here. So all we got to do is rest one hour and literally we have uh, rested two and a half days as far as the refiners go. And so right now that refiner has probably created well over a hundred aluminum. So we got more than enough for what we need. At this point, go ahead and go back to the output system and make sure you're in crafting. And now that we have enough aluminum, we're gonna go ahead and craft three more wind turbines. Make sure you're in the overhead view. So again, I'm gonna place three more of them. We're also gonna go ahead and place the cobalt extractor next. So find your location and place it. At this time, we also have enough to craft your nickel extractor. So let's go ahead and do that also. And at this point, we're gonna wanna go ahead and escape and rest for an hour so we can get some of that sweet, sweet cobalt and nickel produced. One hour should be plenty. At this point, we should have plenty of materials for everything we need. So go ahead, go back into build mode. Make sure you're in the correct view. We'll go ahead and build three more turbines so that they can more than cover everything we need here. And then we're gonna go ahead and build the final extractor we need, which is iron. And as we all know, iron makes us grow. So there's the iron extractor. And now we have all of our extractors that we need. At this point, you can go ahead and rest one more time, just so we have that iron ready to go. Everything else is probably maxed out as well. Okay, at this point, you can go ahead and craft an industrial workbench. And once that's done, you can go ahead and interact with it. At this point, we can create a bunch of items. The most important right now are gonna be adaptive frames because we're gonna need this for crafting other buildings at our outpost. And because we create both aluminum and iron here at the extractors, we can create an infinite amount of these. Now you can craft them in batches. So for example, I'm gonna mouse wheel. You can do, let's say we're gonna make like 20 of them. And when you confirm them, they're gonna craft and you're gonna get EXP for this. So as you could probably see here, you could literally craft hundreds of these. And every time you craft them, they're gonna give you a bunch of EXP. And then you can go and take whatever you crafted here and sell it to vendors around the world for profits. Now, if you're going to want to do that, you're going to want to upscale your production and upscale your storage capacity. We'll look at that next. But the overall goal of this guide is not necessarily XP or gold farming. Just note, this is a tactic you can utilize. You just need something that you can get the materials for at an infinite level and then craft at an infinite level so you can go and sell at vendors. So at this point, we have all the power we need, we have the extractors, we have the crafting station, but now we're limited with the capacity of resources that we can hold. So what we wanna do is we wanna build some storage units. Now you wanna go ahead and shift over to the storage section and go under storage solid. Notice these cost adaptive frames, aluminum and iron. And we got a ton of all of these right now, so we can make as many of these as we need. We have four different types of items that we're creating. So what I wanna do at this point is create four different storage boxes and do separate them. They're gonna try and link up innately, so make sure you don't allow that. So one, two, three, and four. Now you can go ahead and go to, into modify view. What we wanna do is you wanna go over to each of the individual extractors. You're gonna right click on them. That's gonna create an output link and go over to one of these containers and hit E. Now do note, if you're not sure what kind of container you need for the thing you're extracting, if you go and mouse over the extractor, see where it says produces nickel and it's got a little square, that's a little solid icon. And so that matches the solid icon here. 
There's also different icons for gases and liquids, etc. And here we are connecting the fourth and final one. Don't worry if they kind of intersect, it doesn't have to be pretty. Now at this point you have the option of crafting additional storage units so that you can have a higher maximal capacity. We're gonna go ahead and do that because we have a ton of the materials. And at this point, we do want them to kind of potentially connect. And if you left click, and if you left click or right click, it'll select where you can place them. So we'll go ahead and do three here hit escape to get off that one and then we'll repeat the process for the other containers as well and do note you can stack them on top of each other without issue as well and we'll finish up with the fourth one now at this point we want to go to modify mode and starting with the very first one, what you wanna do is go ahead and right click, mouse over to the second one and hit E to connect. So now these two are connected, then right click on the second one. Notice these are solid because they're connected, mouse over to the third one, hit E. And now all three of these are interlinked and they will be filled up in order by the extractors. Go ahead and do the same thing for the other ones. And again, you can do them vertically as well. So we'll connect that one to the bottom one and then we'll connect that one to the top one. Now you got all three of those connected and do the process for all of them. All right, now that we have this location up and operational, there are a couple of miscellaneous items that we want to add. The most important is actually the landing pad with ship builder. Now you should have all these materials because we had you buy the beryllium and zero wire before you got here and you will have crafted adapted frames and the iron. I would say make it kind of close to where you have your bed, for example, and make sure you're not crushing any of your areas where your refiners need to go and then go ahead and place it. Now what's great about this large pad is that in addition to being able to hold any size of ship, while the small one only goes up to 40 meter ships, you can also interact at the top here of this console and you can buy ships as well as modify and build out your ships. And there's a tremendous amount of parts here. By interacting with the platform here also, you can go ahead and summon your ship. So there it is. And at this point, you could easily technically pick up any items that were crafted, or if you want to take any of these materials, do a quick run to the ship and go and sell it. All right, guys, now that you have your landing pad complete, you're at a point where you have everything you need for your starting base. Now, do note, there's nothing fancy here. There's not any cosmetic items. Also, we don't have defenses or any of the automated systems to move your items around from system to system, etc. That's beyond the scope of a basic build out and it's completely unnecessary. I will make a separate video for more advanced tactics, but for now, we're going to keep it simple for everybody. Now, that being said, we can go ahead and take a look at the second type of base that you're likely to build. And this is gonna be your main role-playing slash production headquarter. So let's see what we wanna look for in that kind of planet. So when it comes to this kind of base, a role-playing base or production base, what you're gonna be looking at more than anything else is an aesthetic pleasing design of the planet. Now, before you even get down to planet level, there's certain things you can look for if you want a nice pleasant planet. And that's, for example, temperature being temperate, so it's not too hot or too cold. The atmosphere, having high O2 atmosphere, is really quite good. 
and having a high magnetosphere is going to make it so that you're unlikely to have radiation etc water that is safe is also great and that tends to go along with having abundant flora and fauna so if you want a really pretty planet those are things you may be looking for All right so here we are at the base of my role playing planet now i love snowy planets so i found this randomly i like that there were you know lots of woods kind of reminded me of winter time uh, back home where there's actually snow unlike here in Southern California. So I chose this as a base of operations for myself. I just purely like the aesthetic. I like the fact that you can walk around without having to have masks on. So it's got a safe atmosphere, etc. That's what was important to me. Now, the other thing that's going to be different on these locations is likely what you're going to build. Now you may get fancy with different types of power generation. So maybe you want to get some cool fuel generators uh, as opposed to the more generic wind turbines or solar arrays. But do note here, that means you're going to need to import helium if you want to do that as an example. Additionally, you may actually add habitats for the first time. So there's a variety that you're going to be able to unlock. They're different visually and they're all 100% cosmetic. So everything from these hydroponic hab uh, habs that can be circular or rectangular for example you can have military hubs you can have science hubs uh, and again it's all for flavor it's all for looks now i do want to point out on the upper left hand corner you're always going to have the requirements for any type of buildings some of them you already may have from your exploration and from your outposts others you may need to get so do note if you have a plan for building a certain type of building or structure in your role playing hub and you don't have the components then you can remember hit R to track them and those little magnifying glasses are going to pop up and then when you're out in the world you're going to be able to see those marked and you'll remember to gather them up. Also you can make kind of a personal list on the side of things that you want to look for so if there's certain components that you don't have like we have aluminum and iron but what if we didn't have for example lead here well maybe you want to find a planet that has lead and you may want to put an outpost there so you can gather that fill in the blank for any type of uh, component that you are missing now as an example here i'm going to put this kind of nice color coordinate coordinated habitat we're going to place that down and also note that you can make it high or low so you can kind of with s and w you can raise it and lower it so you can get the right feel for it so here's an example let's go ahead and put that down now you can place multiple ones and they'll kind of connect as you can see you could also create hallways that will attach which can be fun like that or you could simply keep it very very simple and add an airlock which will auto connect to points so you can climb into them and enter in and out Now here we are inside of the habitat and this is one of the few times you may actually uh, craft from the first person perspective. This is a time where you can even further customize your creativity. Now you can create all types of crafting stations, everything that you could get on a ship or back at home base. Because there are other simple ways of getting this, this is all 100% optional. But again, you may want to have this home base where you can do everything for yourself. I can also place down just a variety of furniture, customize the placement. Now again, this is all fully cosmetic, but it lets you live out your fantasy of how you want your base to look like. You can also add a variety of displays, whether it's mannequins to display cases, helmet displays, everything to kind of show off all the goodies that you've gathered throughout your gameplay. Now, an important item to note is the crew station. If you wish to have any of your crew members that have skills that upgrade and, and help the performance of your outposts, well, you need a crew station item built in order for you to be able to do that. So that is under miscellaneous and that's a big one. Additionally, you can add a variety of mission boards like the constellation mission board here. And you can even have a nice and convenient self-service bounty clearance board in case you're playing a pirate and you need to uh, take care of some of your dirt. 
Now, things at your main base don't all have to be cosmetic. You can also get into complex fabrications. You can make complex items, for example. And so that's where fabricators come from. And the way that this works is you can interact with them and you'll have an option to build a variety of items. Now, what makes this different than a workbench is that you can actually attach and flow products and items that you need, these different requirements, into this machine. And this is a more complex system for a more complex video. But the main idea is that you're going to have storages of items that are required to build certain things. The con control console chooses what you're going to build at the very specific area. So for example, it is by default making adaptive frames, but maybe you want this thing to make polytextiles. And now you have that selected. At this point, we basically need to make sure that cosmetic and fiber elements get to here. And they're going to have to either going to be transported from other locations that make them. Now, by default, this makes adaptive frames, but let's say you randomly want to make mag pressure tanks for some reason. The way that this works is that you need to get nickel and aluminum here. Now you could either create a storage box for this and connect it like we did on the basic base and then manually fill it. But realistically, you're going to use more advanced systems to transport those components from different planets to get here. That again is for a more complex video that I will go over in the future. The main thing to note really here is that you can be as creative or not creative as you want with the designs. And you could have an outpost that is purely for fun and looks and has zero functionality. You could have a central hub where all of your crafted components come in and you make a variety of complex items. What you are likely to want to do is make a list of the items that you need for those productions. And once you have that list, think of it as a shopping list. And that shopping list is going to be fulfilled by either And a shopping list is going to be fulfilled by either finding it out in the world it from vendors or if you really want to get deep into the outpost system you're going to get into the support outposts all right now let's finally talk about support outposts and the goal of a support outpost is quite literally to support the needs of your main outposts in this case i found this planet and you'll notice that i have an outpost here that i named chlorine and chlorosilane. And yes, you guessed it, that's because here, that's exactly what I'm gathering up and going to transport to my main headquarters so I can craft items that have these requirements. This is the part where that shopping list I mentioned comes into play. You're gonna travel from planet to planet, you're gonna look for resources and check the resource list to see if they have exactly what you need. So if you need gold for a certain production, oh well, look, this planet has gold. It has the two items I mentioned previously and also copper. So you, if you need one or more of these, maybe you're going to choose to make an outpost here. And here is a look at a very simple support outpost. Now, I do want to point out that I did one thing a little differently here and I'll explain it. But basically, at its core, a support outpost is going to have fabricators that produce exactly what you need. So here we have chlorine and chlorosilanes. Oh my goodness, that's a fun one to pronounce. Now you're gonna have storage units for these. For example, this one is liquid, so that's different than the ones we had before, and this one is gas. So you're gonna have different types of storage units. And then you're gonna need to provide some sort of energy source. Now, do note here, I used a different energy source. I used solar arrays. Now, some areas where they have a lot of sun and where the temperature's hot, solar arrays are gonna be really useful. And if it's cold, not so much. So keep that in mind. You're gonna probably switch between solar or wind power depending on the planet where you build on. Now, one quick thing I did wanna point out is that 
as I mentioned earlier in the video, you do not need to connect energy sources to locations. But I did have a very specific example I want to give you here that you can force a connection. Now this can be important if you sometimes have situations where you don't get enough energy, like for example, solar power. There are times where it's not as sunny and you literally will not get as much energy out of them. So you can force connect to prioritize a certain item to get power from a certain array. So here, for example, I have two that are connected to this fabricator and two that are not. These will just give general power to everything. Now, if you wanted to add this one, all you had to do was mouse over this, hold E, it's going to select wire, hit E, mouse over to whatever you want to connect and hit E again to finalize the connection. Again, totally optional, but I wanted to show that. At its core, this is quite literally all you need for a basic support base. Yes, you can add defenses. Yes, you can add landing base. Yes, you can add automation, which again, I will mention in a future video. But because you can move so quickly from location to location, you can easily pass time, come to a planet manually, loot everything, stick it on your ship, and then fly off to another location if you want to keep it basic. So those are support outposts at their very, very most basic. All right, guys, and with that, that's everything you really need to know about basic outpost building. It doesn't have to be really complex. If you want to get certain functionality done quickly and easily, you can. Yes, you can make it pretty. Yes, you can make it complex. We'll cover that in a future video. But with this information, you get everything you need to know to get started. If you did find this video helpful, make sure to drop a like, subscribe for more content, and let me know what you would like to see me cover next. Thanks for all your support, and I'll see you guys in the next video.